now back to those two dogs trapped in a badger set. Almost an hour has passed since they set about trying to rescue Charlie and Rosie. Time is running out and the rescuers have a surprise coming. The search for the two missing dogs was about to be called off. The West Sussex Technical Rescue Unit were using their specialist listening device on the final tunnel in the badger set. They'd been on the scene for more than an hour. Uh, time was getting very short and uh, I was considering you know, calling it a day. But um, all of a sudden I hear a cry, I can hear something. They did pick up a sound. So it's just a, an absolute relief to hear that they'd found at least one of them and it's just to know that I wasn't going to go home without a dog, hopefully, or without my dogs. There was a huge sense of relief, but this was only the start. They knew one dog was several feet down, possibly trapped behind tree roots. Now they were hoping Rachel could help get it out. The rescue team handed her another device which allowed her to listen and talk to the animal. It was Charlie and I managed to um, hear him. They put phones on my head and I could talk to him because it's like a two-way... They've got these two-way earphones to talk to victims underground and or dogs in my case. As well as calming the owner, she can actually get a response from the dog. It has been possible for that kind of response to get the dog to free itself. That wasn't the case in this case. The problem was that Charlie was in a badger set and they're a protected species. Digging couldn't start without a special licence from Natural England who are responsible for protecting their sets. We got a call from, from the fire service to say that these dogs were present and that they could be heard and through their listening equipment they, they could actually pinpoint the dogs. Because the, the, the fire service w were of the opinion that they could actually get the dogs, without interfering with the set too much, we decided to go and, and issue a licence. As Dr Calvert made his way to check out the set himself, the rescue team started to use more of their specialist equipment. Obviously this doesn't have the, the drama of a, a large incident, um, but it's very, very useful training indeed for us, with the cameras particularly. The picture down a, a badger set, um, when we eventually saw the dog, the dog was covered in earth. But it's very similar to an earthquake um, situation. Anyone that you see would be covered in dust, and you maybe need to be able to interpret the shapes that you see to say that may be a body shape. Charlie's nose and eye could just be seen poking out of the soil and tree roots. He looked completely trapped, unable to free himself. But help was now on hand. Digging could begin. Obviously, the, 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 the drive is to free the dog, but by doing as, as little damage to the set as possible. If we were to dig into a set without knowing exactly where the dog is, we could um, significantly reduce the chances of the dog getting out. But as they were digging, it wasn't Charlie who suddenly appeared. This figure just sort of came um, between our feet. It's just, oh, what's that? And all of a sudden, oh, hang on, it's a dog. <laughs> Amazingly, out pops Rosie, out the side of this trench, which is just the joy. <laughs> I was just so, I just scooped her up. She was covered in mud. She, oh, I was so pleased. <laughs> We'd obviously disrupted something, opened something up, or made a sound um, or uh, that Rosie could actually think, oh, if I go down this tunnel, I can get out that way. At least one dog was going home, but time was ticking away for Charlie. We eventually could see the dog, and to make sure that the dog's nose and eyes weren't um, you know, suffocated with soil, we put the hessian sack that we were using over that and allowed the soil to, to drop onto that and then move the soil from that and then you know, rep repeated the process until the dog was free. After five and a half hours trapped down the badger set, Rosie and Charlie's ordeal was finally over. Very good feeling indeed when we got the dog out uh, safe. Dog went back to the owner. Um, owner was obviously very pleased indeed, and it's a very good feeling for us as well, where you get to stay at the incident right the way through, and then actually see the rescue at the end. It's a very satisfying feeling. Just so relieved, so thankful, grateful, you know, just everything, you know, I couldn't thank them enough. It was a successful uh, job and we got them out and brilliant, thank you very much, <laughs> job done. And, and that is a great feeling, yeah, because it doesn't always work 
successfully, um, but on this occasion it did, so we were all very happy um, that Rachel could go home, see her kids with the dogs in the car, and to see them off like that, brilliant. And here they are looking uh, healthy and well, which is very nice to see. Yep. Um, so, so uh, who has hurt the most? Were there any sustaining injuries? Oh, uh, yeah, Rosie came out worst. Charlie was just bruised, but she, um, the whole of her eyes were scratched because the soil really? was sandy. So, That's yeah. really painful because I've had a paint scratch in my eye and it's really unpleasant. So yeah. had, uh, did, did she look like she was in pain after? Yeah, she was sort of... Yes, I think bleeding. she was in a bit shocked. No, not bleeding, but you could, she had like what I thought was conjunctivitis. Um, so they were um, all caked up. So the next morning, took, to the, took her to the vets and they had to keep her in. They used a litre of uh, saline to clean her eyes out. Wow. And uh, the vets said she'd never seen such scratched eyes. So. Can I just say, the reason that they're making this noise at the moment is because they spotted a rabbit <laughs> out in the distance. So they haven't changed their ways no, at all, no, haven't they? No, it's terriers for you. And given a chance, presumably they'd be straight down another yep. hole. Yep. So you're trying to keep them on the leads a bit more. Yeah, um... they stay on the leads um, unless I'm by water and then I can let them off because I like water. What do you think was the worst moment in the whole rescue? Because it went on for some time, didn't it? Um... Did you ever at any point think you'd yeah. actually lost her? Uh, they could hear Charlie, but they couldn't hear Rosie. So I thought that she was gone. So because we didn't hear her once. Aww. Yeah, and then they could only see Charlie as well down the hole. So because she was behind, so he was stuck in the tree root, but they couldn't see Rosie or hear her. So I thought that she'd gone. So I was very, very upset. And now you have a chance to say something to the people who helped out, all those firemen? Well, I it's just... Some women's dream, that is, well, to be surrounded by firemen actually trying to help you I, I was very surprised that they'd, they'd even come, and I can't tell you how grateful I am that they, they rescued them, and they're here today, and my little boy's still got two dogs. We're so. all very pleased that they're yeah. looking healthy and well, apart from the rabbit, who's looking slightly worried. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>